Hey guys, Richard Oldner here and welcome to the channel. Before we get going, I need you guys to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff so you get notified when we do all these cool tests. Who wants to see a Turbo LS? Who wants to see a Twin Turbo LS? That's right, we're going to compare ambient water versus ice water in the intercooler on a Twin Turbo LS. Then we're going to crank the boost like all the way up, but before we can do that, I need you guys to help me. I need you to help me figure out why this thing did what it did. In this video, I'm going to show you a comparison between running ambient water and running ice water through the air to water intercooler on our twin turbo 6 liter LS. I'm going to show you the change in charge temperature, the change in boost, and of course the change in power. Are you guys ready to put your thinking caps on? Because I need you guys to help me figure out why did the boost change on this application. Let's take a look. To illustrate the effect of the change in charge temperature going from ambient water to ice water on our air to water intercooler on our twin turbo LS, obviously we needed an LS and we started out this thing with our Big Bang 6 liter. This is a Gen 4 motor, basically a stock bottom end. All we did was increase the ring gap. So it had stock blocks, stock cranks, stock rods, stock pistons, and then added ring gap. And to that, we added a set of TrickFlow 225 heads a Brian Tooley Racing Stage 3 Twin Turbo Cam, and a Holley Race Sniper Intake Manifold and matching 92mm th throttle body. What I did was run the motor NA first because that way I could always find out how much power it was supposed to make once we got to given boost levels. We could find out and make sure that it was doing exactly what it was supposed to. So we ran this thing with long tube headers with the Holly HP management system. And when we ran this thing NA, it made 548 horsepower and 462 foot pounds of torque. Here's what happened after we added our twin turbo setup. This was at 14 pounds. So we are our twin turbo setup for the Big Bang motor consisted of tubular headers. These were from DNA, both of those feeding a pair of BorgWarner S475 turbos. The turbos were feeding boost through a twin core air to water intercooler from the guys at CX Racing. All the boost was controlled through a pair of 45 millimeter turbo smart wastegates, and they also supplied a blow off valve. So it was two in and a single out, and obviously we monitored charge temperature and all the things so that we could get all the data. So what we did was the way we normally run these turbo motors is we will run them with the dyno water supplying, because we have a 25 gallon or 2500 gallon cell, West Tech does, supplying water to the dyno. So we just take some of that water and divert it through the air water intercooler, and it works fine. In this case, it was about 78 degree water going through the air to water intercooler. It just goes through the core and then goes back into the tank. Not a problem. And then what we did for the test was we hooked up a dedicated cell that I could fill with ice water. And then we would supply the air to water intercooler cores both sides because there's two cores. We would supply those with ice water. And that's the only change that we made. We didn't change the air fuel. We didn't change the timing. And we didn't adjust anything on the boost. All this was controlled by a manual wastegate controller. We'll get into all that in just a second. But Run at 14 pounds, our combination produced 1,000, uh, 1,042 horsepower and 810 foot pounds of torque. And here's what happened when we replaced the ambient dyno water, the 78 degree dyno water with 32 degree ice water. The power picked up pretty dramatically. Uh, peak power was 1,077. We saw gains as high as 70 horsepower on this comparison and again there were no adjustments on the ECU we didn't we didn't allow it to add any timing we didn't allow it to change the airfield the airfield was exactly the same between the two runs the timing was exactly the same between the two runs the only change was the change in charge temperature but as we'll see there was also a change in boost pressure and that's the big question here why did the boost pressure change? We're going to take a look at that right now, but that's what I want you to think about, and that's what I want you to comment about. Why did the boost pressure change on this application? In running this test on our tur twin turbo 6 liter, comparing the ice water to the ambient water running through the intercooler, we need to, it's very important to note that we use a manual wastegate controller on this, basically just a bleed valve and not an electronic controller. So as such, one of the reasons or the primary reason that we saw a jump in power was that we saw a jump in boost pressure. So this is our test run with the ambient dyno water. 
This is the boost pressure up here on top, which it had a peak of 14.1 pounds. And this the lower line is the back pressure. So we only had 8.3 pounds of back pressure. So we had a lot less back pressure than we had boost pressure because this is a twin turbo application and we had fairly big turbos on this thing. So we weren't even using at this power level, we're using about half of what these turbos are capable of and running this thing all the way up to 29 pounds, the back pressure never got to be more than the boost pressure. And that's something that happens when you size the turbos uh, correctly. So here's also what happened when we changed from ambient water to ice water on this combination. Here's what happened to the boost pressure. So we can attribute the gain in power because we saw an increase in boost pressure. The peak boost pressure on the ice water went up to 14.2 pounds, where it was 14.1 pounds. So it's not a big change, but you can see through a lot of the curve here, we saw a difference of almost one, one pound or so is about the most difference. Most of it, it was less than that. The interesting thing is you take a look at this that in the in the red we saw an increase in boost pressure except at the very top but we still still saw power gains up there but we also saw an increase in back pressure and those two things go together if the boost pressure goes up more than likely the back pressure is going to go up as well we would expect that the other thing that would indicate that the back pressure is going to go up is the fact that it made more power so if it's making more power and it has more exhaust flow and it's flowing through the same orifice you're going to get an increase in back pressure so we saw more boost pressure which explains the power gain we saw more back pressure which goes right along with this but my question is why did the boost go up there was no change in air fuel there was no change in timing and we made no change in the wastegate. So the question is, why did the boost pressure increase when we cooled the charge temperature? Let me know in the comments. Now let's take a look at what the change in temperature was going from the ambient dyno water to the ice water. So we've shown that uh, decreasing the charge temperature by using ice water in our air water intercooler increased the power. It also increased the boost again, Make sure to let me know in the comments why you think that happened. Why did the boost go up when we changed the temperature of the air going into the motor? But I'm going to show you how much we changed it here. So we data log the air temperature. This is in the manifold after the air to water intercooler. And so this is with our ambient dyno water. And you can see here it started out... Um, 86.9, so 87 degrees. And it rose to a peak of out here at 7,000 rose to a peak of right at 100 degrees. So the air to water intercooler is working fairly well and we're looking at um, temperatures over 200 degrees coming out of the turbo at 14 pounds of boost. So here's what happened when we switched over to ice water. You can see temperatures are a lot lower. They started out at about 50 degrees, which is pretty cold because we have a 32 degree transfer medium. Basically, we had we had a big cell with ice in it. And so we were running ice water through the core and we did see a rise in temperature. So it stayed at about 50 degrees or so, 40 and even dropped down to 49 or 48 degrees. Um, all the way till about 4,500 RPM. And then we saw a, a slight rise in temperature out to a peak of 68 degrees. So it was 32 degrees cooler than the temperature with the ambient water. The one thing that I don't like about this setup, and I, and I think it's probably a flow rate, it's probably the pump that we were using to circulate the water, is that we did see a rise in temperature and I'd like to see this stay steadier all the way through. Now we, we would normally have a rise in temperature only because the reaction rate of the type K thermocouple and also because the longer the thing is at temperature, we're going to see a slight increase. But I'd like to see this not right, rise quite as much as it did. And like I said, I think that's probably a function of we were using the pump that we were using to circulate the water through the air to water intercooler. I don't think was as big as we'd like it to be. And the other thing is the, the fittings that are in the air to water intercooler, the way that they have this thing plumbed, it goes in and out, um, on the, the same section of the core. And I'd like to see this have big openings, first of all, and I'd like to see it just be passed through. And I think that we would get better, um, temperature drop with those same cores. Obviously we could make bigger cores and I don't think that this intercooler 
is ideal for what we're doing because it's an in inexpensive one. We got it from the guys at CX Racing, but we were able to make 1500 horsepower and it worked fairly well. I'd just like to see a more consistent charge temperature. But here is the drop in temperature. So we have the change in power, we saw the change in boost, and we saw the change in temperature. But again, <laughs> my question to you guys is, why did we see the increase in boost when we lower the charge temperature by running ice water in the intercooler? Let me know in the comments. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do we learn in this comparison between the ambient dyno water and the ice water? Now, we know that we made more power. We know that it increased the boost and the back pressure, and we know that it lowered the charge temperature. But the question is, why? Why did the boost go up? So while you guys are thinking about that and commenting, I'm going to show you the rest of the dyno results because we didn't just stop at 14 pounds. In fact, we doubled that power output on the stock bottom end 6 liter. So check this out and make sure to comment. Okay guys, I want to give you the payoff here because obviously we did a video and a comparison running ice water, but we did a lot more with this motor. We eventually made uh, some fairly big power numbers with our stock bottom end LY6, so stock block, crank rods, pistons, just added ring gap, and then we put the other things on there as I described, and the NA motor made 548 horsepower. Then once we added ice water to our 14 pound range, we are at 1,077 horsepower, but obviously we didn't stop there, even though we did our ice water test. Run at 17 and a half pounds, our combination produced over 1,200 horsepower. Yeah, 22 pounds, over 1,340 horsepower. And then finally, I know we ran it at a bunch of different boost levels, but finally at 29.2 pounds, it made 1,543 horsepower and 1,256 foot-pounds of torque. Again, stock bottom end, stock block, rods, crank, pistons, and just added a ring gap. We did have good head studs and stuff on it, and we only had to stop here because I basically topped out the map sensor. Now, since then, we've obviously got a four bar map sensor and we can run that without any problem. So we can revisit the test. And before I do, I would really like to upgrade the arid water intercooler. And we were using clamps and silicone couplers on this. And I probably would need to find a better way to attach these things because we've blown these off a couple of times at this high power and, and boost level. Let's get to the conclusion. Okay, guys, you can see ice water does very well. I mean, we were able to turn the boost up quite a bit, up to 29.2 pounds. We made a ton of power, over 1,500 horsepower on the stock bottom end, which is very, very impressive. If I were to redo this test, which I might, I'd like to see more flow through the core, both more water flow through the core and more air flow through the core, too. That would necessitate either a change to a big single core or maybe twin, you know, dual cores with more flow rate and more water flow rate. But that's another test for another day. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I'll keep testing.